Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Thursday, October 8th, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's four Major League Baseball playoff games. Look ahead to today's four Major League Baseball playoff games. College football. We have a game tonight in the AAC that we'll preview and predict. Thursday night football. We have a game tonight that we'll preview and predict. The latest on the Titans COVID situation. Recapping the rest of the NHL draft. Recapping last night's episode of The Mass Singer and my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start with the Major League Baseball playoffs. Crazy day in the postseason. A lot of dramatic games, some dramatic moments. And we have a couple teams on the verge of elimination. Braves over the Marlins 2 0 as the Braves take a 2 0 series lead. Ian Anderson, the win. Pablo Lopez lost. Mark Melanson, the save. Bottom of the second home run to Asby Swanson. 1 0. Bottom of the fourth home run, Travis Darno. 2 0. As the Braves hang on for the win. Ian Anderson, 5 and 2 thirds. 3 no one runs. A walk, 8 strikeouts. Then Darren O'Day for a third of an inning. Then Tyler Matzik for an inning. Will Smith for an inning. And Mark Melanson for an inning. Pablo Lopez, 5 innings. 3 hits, 2 runs. No walks, 7 strikeouts. Here, right in the postseason, 3.6. Then came in Richard Blyer. Then Brad Boxberger, then Brandon Kinsler. And now the Marlins are on the verge of elimination. Athletics over the Astros 9 to 7 as they force a game four. Liam Hendricks the win and Brooks Raley the loss. Top of the first home run, Tommy Lastella went off the ace. Bottom of the first home run, Jose Altuve 1 1. Fielder's choice, Carlos Correa 2 1 Strohs. Top of the second home run, Marcana 2 2. Top of the fourth, Matt Olson 3 2 A's. Top of the fifth, home run Marcus Simeon, 4 2 A's. Bottom of the fifth, two run shot, Aledmi Diaz, 4 4. RBI single, Michael Brantley, 5 4 Strohs. RBI double, Alex Bregman, 6 4 Strohs. RBI single, Kyle Tucker, 7 4 Strohs. Top of the seventh, a clutch three run shot to tie the game by Chad Pinder, make it 7 7. Top of the eighth, sack fly, Sean Murphy, 8 7. And sack fly, Chad Pinder, 9 7. That was it. Hayes Luz Luzardo, four and a third, five hits, four runs, two walks, two strikeouts. He's Mario Petit, went for a third of an inning. Jake Dykeman went for an inning and a third. And Liam Hendricks went three full innings. Jose Yurdeke, four and a third, five hits, four runs, a walk, three strikeouts. Blake Taylor, two thirds of an inning. Josh James won an inning. Brooks Raley went two innings. And Andre Scrub went one inning. Raise over the Yankees, 8-4 to take a 2-1 series lead as the Yankees are now on the verge of elimination. Charlie Morton, the win, Masahiro Tanaka, the loss. Top of the second, RBI single, Michael Perez, 1-0 in Tampa. Bottom of the third, sack fly, Aaron Judge, 1-1. Top of the fourth, three-run shot, Kevin Kiermaier, 4-1 Rays. Top of the fifth, home run, Randy Arozarena, 5-1 Rays. Bottom of the fifth, RBI double, Aaron Hicks, 5-2. Top of the sixth, two-run shot, Michael Perez makes a 7-2 Rays. RBI double, Jai Manchoy, eighth, two raise, bottom of the eighth, garbage time home run for Giancarlo Stanton. His fourth home run of the series, sixth of the postseason, amazing. Six, or I'm sorry, eight for Tampa Bay, and that was your final. Charlie Moore in five innings, four hits, and a run, two walks, six strikeouts. John Curtis, an inning and two thirds. Um, Shane McClanahan went an inning and a third, and Diego Castillo pitched a clean ninth. Masiro Tanaka, Four innings, eight hits, five runs, a walk, four strikeouts. Chad Green went an inning. Louis Sessa went an inning. Nick Nelson went an inning. And Michael King went two innings. Dodgers over to Padres, six to five. to take a 2-0 series lead. And now the Padres are on the verge of elimination. Clayton Kershaw, the win. Zach Davies, the loss. Joe Kelly, the save. Top of the second, RBI double. Will Myers, one off in San Diego. Bottom of the third, two-run double. Corey Seager, 2-1 Dodgers. RBI single, Max Muncy, 3-1 Dodgers. Bottom of the fourth, home run Cody Ballinger, 4-1 Dodgers. Top of the sixth, home run Manny Machado made it 4-2. Home run Eric Hosmer made it 4-3. Then we're thinking, oh, Clayton Kershaw blowing in the playoffs again. Not so fast. Bottom of the seventh, sack fly Justin Turner, 5-3. RBI single, Max Muncy, 6-3. Top of the ninth, RBI double, Mitch Moreland, 6-4. And RBI single, Trent Christian makes it 6-5. 
and the Dodgers hang on for the win. Kershaw, six innings, six hits, three runs, no walks, six strikeouts. Blake Trina went two thirds. Bruce Saw Greater all went an inning and a third. Kenley Jansen struggled. He went two thirds of an inning. And Joe Kelly went a third of an inning. Zach Davies, five innings, nine hits, four runs, no walks, three strikeouts. Mia Pagan went an inning. Pierce Johnson went a third. Drew Pomeranz went two thirds. And Dan Altavia, replacing Trevor Bauer on the roster, went an inning. And now today's games at. 2 o'clock on Fox Sports 1, you have the Braves and the Marlins. Kyle Wright and Sixto Sanchez. This should be an interesting game. Two young pitchers, obviously. Um, Sixto Sanchez um, got into that slump at the end of the season and then pitched well against the Cubs. Kyle Wright, meanwhile, um, had some moments this year. Braves are minus 148. Marlins plus 128, over under 8.5. Juice of the over at minus 122, unders at even money. Braves run line plus 114, minus 1.5. And, and in Miami, um, minus 134, plus 1.5. Um, tough call. I know the Braves run line has been my go to. I've been winning and thriving off of it. I'm going to keep that going. I'm going to take the minus one and a half, and I think the Braves pull off the sweep. So give me Atlanta to get it done tonight to end the Marlins season. 3.30 TBS Athletics Astros. Frankie Montas for Oakland. We don't know who's going for Houston. Um... I think Oakland forces a game five. I think we're in for some chaos today. Um, I like Frank, Frankie Montas. Did he have a good season? No, not really. But um, we don't know who's gone for Houston. Um, the Astros, I think, want to end this. Um, but I think Oakland has some other ideas. I think the total is going to be projected around nine, and I'll take the over. So for my play of the game, I'll probably take the over, but if the Oakland Athletics are underdogs today, I'm betting them straight up. Um, 7 o'clock on TBS, you have the Rays and the Yankees. Jordan Montgomery and Ryan Thompson. Yankees minus 138, Rays plus 120 over under 9. Juice to the over minus 112, unders minus 108. Yanks run line plus 140, minus 1.5, plus 1.5 is minus 166 on the Rays side. The Rays plus the 120 is very enticing. I think the Yankees have been overvalued in this series as a, from a series price standpoint. Even though I like them to win the series in five, um, they were overvalued yesterday. Um, they're probably overvalued here again. But this is a bigger line than the Rays were yesterday. The Rays were like plus 119 or plus 118. Um, I'm going to keep riding the baby, and that's the over. Um, I'm not so sure who's going to win this game, but if I had a gunpoint, you would think the Rays, but I just don't see how this doesn't go five. Yes, the Yankees are 3-10 and ten against the Rays this year, including the postseason, but... This screamed five-game series. The umpiring's been atrocious in the series um, on both ends. Um, I think you'll get better umpiring. Um, I think that the Yankee offense is due to wake up. Only Giancarlo Stanton's really stepped up these last two days. Um, so, just hinging on a prayer, I won't be shocked if... This um, is similar to Yankees-Indians. I'm going to say it's like a 9-7 to Yankees win. I don't feel good about it. Won't be shocked if it's come from behind. Won't be shocked if the Rays bullpen, like the Nick Anderson less of the bullpen, uh, shows a little regression. Even Nick Anderson to some degree. But um, 
Nick Anderson's the race best reliever easily. The rest of the bullpen I really don't trust. Um, even though Castillo pitched well last night and John Curtis has been bad in the series. Um Ryan Thompson's actually been good and I like the call of going then for the opener. I think Montgomery's gonna be an opener here and then you may see uh Davy Garcia or Jay Happ again. I bet it's gonna be Montgomery for like two or three. And Davy Garcia for two. And then that's five innings. And then Chad Green for two. And maybe they go Britton and Chapman longer because uh, they barely pitched in the series. I So I think you're going to see a lot of the Yankee bullpen. You'll see a lot of Jonathan Holder, too. Because I think he's capable of going multiple innings and pitching well. Um, so I'm going to take over nine as my play here. I don't feel good about saying that the Yankees are going to force a game five, but um, that's where I think this is going to go. And then last but not least, the Dodgers and the Padres, 9 o'clock MLB Network. Adrian Morjon for San Diego. We don't know who's going for the Dodgers. Dustin May was used out of the bullpen in game number one, which surprised me. I thought they were going to start him in game three. Maybe you'll see him out of the bullpen again in this game. I have no clue where the Dodgers are going in terms of who's pitching. No clue. It's obviously not Walker Buehler or Clayton Kershaw because we saw them in games one and two respectively. Um, I project the total to be somewhere like in the nine, nine and a half range. I'll probably go over again. Um... And my theme of the day has been chaos, and I think San Diego is just due for a good offensive game. They showed a lot of life last night to try to steal that game. San Diego wins if Cody Bellinger doesn't make that great catch last night. So I'm going to take the Padres here. I know they're going to be an underdog, but um, I'm probably going to take the over here and not... Um, take the risk of betting the Padres. If I bet any underdog today, it's probably going to be the Athletics. Maybe I'd consider Tampa, but I'm not going to pull the trigger. So um, I'm going to probably take the Athletics as the lone dog, but I'm going to lean the over for Dodgers-Padres and um, ride it just like yesterday. Now I'm going to talk about college football for tonight. Um, you have Tulane and Houston. Houston's playing their first game of the season. We've not seen them. Obviously, this is year two under Dana Holgerson. Um, Houston's had a lot of their games postponed due to COVID issues. Tulane's 2-1. and 0-1 oh in conference play. They had that rough loss to Navy where Navy came back from 24 down against them. And their two wins were non-conference wins. Um... This is a very, very hard line to project because Houston has not played a game. So my projection for this came out to be Houston 3, or I'm sorry, Tulane 3. So I'm not convinced that Houston's very good. I think Houston's just the popular side because of Holgerson and um, people don't believe in Tulane. I'm going to take Tulane getting the 6.5. And I think Tulane wins outright. I take them on the money line at plus 210. I like the over 60.5 as well. So my play here, Tulane plus 6.5, and, and I'm going to call for the upset here. Houston has not played a game. Tulane has three under their belt. So I really like Tulane not only to cover that 6.5, but I like them to win the game on the field. Now we'll move on to the NFL tonight between the Bucks and the Bears. It's going to be a fun game. Down in Chicago, um, the Buccaneers are favored by three and a half. The total is forty-four and a half. I project the Bucks as two and a half point favorites, and the total fifty-one. Um, no, Chris Godwin's a big deal. Um, I love the over forty-four and a half in this game. I think that. The Bears offense 
bounces back here from its debacle against the Colts. Um, I won't be shocked if Tampa's looking ahead a little bit. I won't be shocked if the Bears win the game outright. Um, Thursday night games are weird. Um, Nick Foles, obviously, against Tom Brady, so it's a quarterback Super Bowl rematch in that sense from 2017-18. But my play is going to be over 44 and a half, and I'm going to say the Bucks win this game 26-24 on a game-ending field goal by Matt Gay. Um, or I'm sorry, Ryan Suckup's their kicker. Matt Gay is their kicker from last year. Game-winning field goal by Ryan Suckup in the last minute of the game. But my podcast play is going to be over 44 and a half, and I feel pretty, pretty good about it. I think this, there, there's going to be points scored. Scotty Miller, um, you've got... Mike Evans, no Fournette tonight either, but I don't think that's a loss. Ronald Jones, I could see having a big day on the ground um, as well as, um, who's the, oh, LaShawn McCoy even. Um, Obviously him and Matt Nagy, I think have crossed paths before, but I don't really remember if they did cross paths with Philly or not. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, so I think that's, a cute little subplot. And then I could see the Bears offense bouncing back, like Nick Foles having a better game. I could see Anthony Miller and Allen Robinson having good games. Tariq Cohen. Um, wait a minute. I think Tariq Cohen's hurt. If so, I have to move the line. So hang on a second. I think uh, Tariq Cohen's injured. But if he is, I have to move the line. Yeah. Torn ACL for Tariq Cohen. I missed that. So, um. No, he's not worth anything on the spread, according to myself. But, um. Oh, wait a minute. I probably didn't give him, like, a number ATS because of uh, the quarterback. Because I thought this was going to be Trubisky. And, um. Obviously, like I said, it's Foles, not um, Trubisky. I'm going to say 26-24 Tampa Bay. I think David Montgomery is a big game. Cole Komet. Um, Jimmy Graham has actually looked decent this year. I love the over. I'm going to say 26-24 Buck and Nears as my um, actual prediction for this game. Now we'll talk about the latest with the Titans COVID situation. News just came down that another Titans player tested positive for COVID-19. Um, I really think this puts their game against the Bills in jeopardy. Um, the Titans obviously broke rules. 21 cases. And obviously they had private workouts last Wednesday. And obviously um, I think that had something to do with it. Um if they didn't, if that didn't happen, I think they'd be playing on Sunday against the Bills. But no, they were irresponsible and broke rules. And now half their team, not half their team, but a good number of their team has COVID. And um, I really think their game against the Bills is in jeopardy. And honestly, I think the league should force a forfeit. The Titans broke the rules. And guess what? The Bills are riding high, and they probably win this game anyway. Because I don't think the Titans are a good 3-0. You guys know how I feel about Ryan Tannehill. And the Bills, I was very high on coming into the season. So I don't know if they'll actually be a forfeit, but I think this game is going to get postponed or outright canceled. If it gets postponed, I could see it getting moved to Monday night, but the other factor in this is that the Chiefs host the Bills on Thursday Night Football a week from today, and do they move that to Friday night? So I think this has ramifications for the Chiefs as well. So this is not a good week, two weeks for the NFL, and it's all because of the Titans. And um, the Cam Newton thing obviously was a big deal too, but he was the only guy that tested positive other than uh, Stephon Gilmore. And they, the Patriots obviously had to um, 
uh, um, not have practice on Wednesday. And so it's going to be interesting to see what happens with this game. Um, I think it's going to get canceled because um, this is an outbreak. Like, this is Cardinals-Marlins-esque. And I think the Titans are in trouble for this season in terms of um, not whether they'll play or not. I think they're going to continue their season. But I think their season could spiral. Although I said that about the, the Cardinals when they had their outbreak in that, and uh, they wound up making the postseason, although they lost in that first round. And the Marlins were, are suddenly still in the postseason. Nobody expected them to be in the ALDS. So um, maybe I'm wrong here about the Titans, but... Uh, this is just a shame. 21 COVID cases, players and personnel for the Tennessee Titans. And they are obviously being irresponsible. And now Ian Rappaport is reporting that the Bills-Titans game is in doubt and Tennessee cannot reopen its facility or practice after two, oh, two additional positive COVID. So one player and then I guess one more personnel. So 22 COVID cases for the Tennessee Titans. What a disaster. Now we'll move on to the NHL draft, which uh, finished up yesterday. Um, I'm just going to go over um, the rest of the draft and picks and like trades and all that jazz. So the trade took William Wallander, 32. Um, Ottawa went Robbie... Charventi, um, Buffalo went with John Jason Paterka as um, they had the Sharks pick um, that took place, the trade that took place um, yesterday. So they traded up yesterday to take uh, John Jason Paterka. The Kings took Helge Grands. Anaheim went with Sam Colangelo. Minnesota at 37 went with Marat. Kunsadinov. Um, so this was a pretty big trade. As the Devils sent their pick in um, to the Wild in the trade yesterday. It took um, Luke Coonan and a fourth to Nashville for Nick Bonino. Um, Minnesota's third this year, and then the pick that um, they took uh, um, Kuznishdinov with. Um, San Jose from Buffalo went with Thomas Bordeaux. Minnesota went with Ryan O'Rourke. Winnipeg at 40, Daniel Torgerson. Carolina via the Rangers, or from the Rangers. Bill Gundler, they got that pick in the uh, um, in that trade for Adam Fox. The Preds went with Luke Evangelista. Emil Heinemann was the Florida's pick at 43. Ottawa from Toronto went with Tyler Clevelin. The Kings from Edmonton via the trade, Bro Brock Faber. Chicago took a goalie, Drew Comenso, in a pick that came from the Penguins via Vegas. Montreal went with Luke Tuck, 47, and then Jan Mysack, 48. Arizona forfeited their pick because of violations. Calgary at 50 went with Jan Kuznetsov, the D-man. Detroit from Vietnam. Of Vancouver via L.A., Theodore Neerbrock, Pittsburgh from Columbus via Ottawa, Joel Blumquist, that was in the uh, Matt Murray trade. As they said, Matt Murray to Ottawa. Now Ottawa has itself a goaltender. Carolina 53 went with Vasily Ponmarov. Philadelphia went with Emil Andre 54-55. Detroit from Washington went with Cross Hannes. 56 was San Jose from Colorado via Washington. Tristan Robbins. Tampa Bay from St. Louis via Montreal. Jack Finley. Boston 
at 58 went with Mason Laurie, the D-man. Toronto from the Islanders via Ottawa. Ronnie Havronen. How did he drop to the Maple Leafs at 59? That's beyond me. I'm surprised about that. The Rangers from Vegas via Los Angeles went with William Coyle as they traded away Leah Sanderson for this pick. Um, Ottawa from Dallas via Vegas, Igor Sokolov. And last but not least, Tampa at 62 went with Gage Gonsalves. Now it's the second round. Notable thirds. Um, Toronto at 64 went with Toppy Nyamla. Kings at 66 went with Kastner. Simitival. Detroit at 70 went with Emil Vero, the D-man. Um, fourth round notables, um, Detroit from Edmonton went with goalie Jan Bednar. Um, no notable fifths. The Devils in the sixth round went with Benjamin Botgardner, the center, in the sixth round. And that was at 161, and no notable seventh round picks either. Um, NHL free agency, um, I want to talk about that really quick. That begins, um, hmm, it starts October 9th at 12 o'clock Eastern, so maybe we'll preview it a little bit tomorrow on the show. If I have time. Now I'm going to talk about last night's episode of The Mass Singer. Um, fun show. Um, Joel McHale was a guest judge. As he opened the show um, in a Robin. Like covered by a, uh, a Robin thick stick head. And he walked out. I forgot what song he walked out to, and I thought it was surprising that he didn't walk out to Blurred Lines. And then he sang Blurred Lines, and he wasn't that good. And you knew it was obvious that it was Joel McHale by the way he was dressed and his mannerisms. And then he wound up being the guest judge. And then come the contestants. Popcorn starts. Um, talks about being in a hospital and anxiety. There is a Ruby Cues. And then she said, I survived. That had me scratching my head. And she talks about how she found their voice, and then there was a rainbow which hinted at LGBTQ. She performed Falling by Harry Styles. And then the uh, interesting thing today, or I'm sorry, on last night's show, was the drone clue. And the drone clue was a planet. And then she said it brings her closer. And then um, my guest... I went from Tina Turner last week. I changed it up. I went with Gloria Gaynor. I was um, getting Gloria Gaynor vibes. And I survived really was something that stood out to me. And Joel McHale also said Gloria Gaynor. Ken Jeong got a ridiculous guess of Katy Perry. And Jenny's guess was Vanessa Williams, which um, I don't think was that good of a guess for her. The giraffe hinted at being at a crossroads, poised to uh, come back and put on another show. He said that his life turned upside down, so he hinted at tragedy. And then there was a black and white eye, which um, maybe gave... Some people think in Blink-182. And had me thinking seeing in black and white. In terms of... Uh, like that phrase. Um, you say things in black and white or you see things in color. And then the draft performed Get Down On It by Cool and the Gang. And his drone clue was... A two-sided four die. As like there were two die with two number fours on it. And then he turned it around and there were two more number fours. And I was thinking 4 times 4 is 16. 
And then he said, score my identity. Had people thinking that it's a sports player. But in terms of the clue and life turned upside down, I know this famous person had a tragedy a couple years ago, the loss of his father, and I went with Howard Stern. It says it was the giraffe and he was tall like him. Had me thinking Howard Stern, plus he wasn't a good singer. Robin Thicke took Jenny McCarthy's guest from last week and went with Travis Barker. Joel McHale went with either um, Jason Priestley or Scott Wolf in terms of his initial guests. And then the Cole Scherzinger went with Shia LaBeouf, and so did Ken Jung. Then came the Snow Owls. There was a hint about a messy breakup from the gentleman. They hinted that they're there for each other. There's an anchor, and there's a letter D in the clue package. They performed Like I'm Gonna Lose You by Megan Trainer and John Legend. The drone clue was a witch hat. And they said, the tip to the hat, who gets the clue? And that witch hat looked awfully like a witch hat from Wicked. I don't feel good about this. This is the toughest one for me in terms of this group. But I'm going to ride with Adina Menzel and Joel Gray of Wicked. For now. Ken Jung went with Ron Schneider and L. King. And that was, a, I thought, not a bad guess. And then he um, changed it to Rachel McAdams and Will Farrell. Joel McHale went with Ron Schneider and L. King as well. And then he's like, oh, well, I'm not going to say that because Ken Jung said it. Because we know the joke of uh, Ken Jung being a jinx and being a bad judge in terms of guessing. And then Joel McHale went with Garth Brooks and Trisha Yearwood. And then Jenny went with the same kind of vibe in terms of a male country singer and said Keith Urban and Nicole Kidman. The Sun. Um, there were woods. There was a blue butterfly that was kind of a heart shaped, and then there were white hearts as w- too. And then there were um, candy canes. And then there was an ugly rumor sign. And then she performed Praying by Kesha, which I thought was unbelievable. The drone clue was an eight ball, like a magic eight ball and the eight ball you hit in the pool game. Um, I still can't get over the Disney clue in the, in the week one package. I was still oh, going to go with Christina Aguilera. I don't feel good about it. But the sun can sing. Jenny McCarthy had a good guess. Mandy Moore. Because obviously Candy Canes and Mandy Moore sang um, I Want Candy. Robin went with Catherine McPhee. There's a couple hints that hinted towards her from both clue packages. But I'm not buying that. I think this singer's better than Catherine McPhee. And Catherine McPhee came in second on American Idol. But by the way, if there's a hint of the Rottweiler and the Suns package, then I'll jump on the bandwagon with Robin Thicke. And then Nicole Scherzinger said the person who I thought the seahorse was last week, Carrie Underwood. That had me thinking, oh boy, the Sun actually did sound a little bit like Carrie Underwood. And if the Sun is indeed Carrie Underwood, it would be the second season in a row where I thought somebody for one character that they compared another character to that it wound up being that character. For example, I thought the astronaut was Jesse McCartney last year. The turtle and the astronaut were compared throughout the season last year or last season. And the turtle wound up being Jesse McCartney, not the um, astronaut. So that could be um, this season's version of what I confused for the uh, um, the uh, um, astronaut for the, um, the turtle. Instead, I'd be confusing the um, um, the seahorse for the sun. But you never know. And who gets voted off? The giraffe. 
The draft actually was okay. Um, last night, other than uh, rather than two weeks ago, but it was a tough vote, and uh, I thought they had the right call with the giraffe. Uh, my first impression guess was Russell Wilson of the Seahawks because I thought it was an athlete, and they hinted at music, so I thought C- of Sierra. So with Russell Wilson is my first impression guess, and then my final guess was Howard Stern. Um. Ken Jung's first impression guess was Will I Am. His final guess was Shia LaBeouf. Nicole Scherzinger's first impression guess was Dale Earnhardt Jr., which was not bad because he hinted at um, his life turning upside down. And obviously, he was in a crash last year with his family in the helicopter crash. And then her final guess was Dale Jr. too. And then the and then the Cubes obviously had four 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 four, and then an eight and eight. He drove the 8, and then he drove 88. Jenny McCarthy's first impression guess was Travis Barker. Her final guess was Seth Green. Robin Thicke's first impression guess was Jadiel White, and his final guess was Travis Barker. Joel McHale didn't have a first impression guess. His final guess was Jason Priestley, but who was it? Brian Austin Green. Nobody got that right. But some of these guys were close. Um, there's a fox hint, which hinted at being married to Megan Fox. Um, obviously, um, he's an actor, um, and it was close. Some of them were close. Um, Travis Green, um, got the green right from, uh, Jenny McCarthy's point of view. Obviously, uh, Travis Green's a singer, has a couple albums. Um, Nicole wasn't even close. And then Jason Priestley, obviously an actor and director, so Joel proved to be close. And then Travis Barker, who I did not think it was. Obviously, he's from Blink-182, so that's what had everybody thinking of Travis Barker. But yeah, Brian Austin Green, what a fun um, outcome of this show. And next week is the Group B playoffs, so you'll see um, all the fun ones from... Last week, so obviously the whatchamacallit, the serpent, the um, seahorse, the crocodile, and I'm obviously missing somebody from last week. Oh, baby alien. So next week's going to be a lot of fun for sure. And obviously we'll preview and predict it on the show. And best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel, as it always is for the most part. FanDuel's been my hot spot lately in terms of betting. Um, I'm undecided between the over in tonight's um, Bucks bears game or Tulsa getting the 6.5 against Houston. If I could see a world where it's a defensive struggle in Bucks bears and no Chris Godwin and stuff, so... I'm going to take Tulsa getting the six and a half. The juice is on Houston at minus 120. So this line might go to seven. So I'm going to take two lane plus the six and a half. A lot of value, minus 102. Although it's going to go up to seven, I'll probably bet it again against Houston. I think that Tulane will win the game on the field as well. So That's it for the show today. I'll be back with the latest on the Titans' COVID situation. Maybe their game against the Bills gets canceled. We'll see. Um, We'll obviously preview and predict all the rest of the games for the College Football Week 6 and NFL Week 5 slates. Um, We will preview and predict Game 5 of the NBA Finals. Major League Baseball playoffs, obviously, too. We'll preview NHL free agency. And we'll pick the NASCAR races for the weekend as well. Hope you guys have... A great day, everyone.